Ceiling Unlimited. Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles. This radio program is brought to you by the men and women of Lockheed and Vega. I understand your sentiments, gentlemen, and I appreciate them. But I have a special reason for wanting it this way, and I think you'd like it. It should be a simple granite shaft pointing toward the sky. Splendid. And a bronze plaque with a record of everything he's done, his achievements? No, just the poem. He liked it so much when he was young. And the word chiseled into the granite, pilot. Uh, but isn't that rather... Is it, uh, is it enough? Well, you gentlemen are all old friends of my son. I think maybe I should explain. Of course, I've known him even longer than you have. That poem, for instance. Even when he was very little, I remember how round his eyes used to get when I'd read it to him. Saw the vision of the world and all the wonder that would be. Saw the heavens filled with commerce, argosies of magic sails. Pilots of the purple twilight dropping down with costly veil. And then before we knew it, he was 18 years old. I've got the framework all finished, Mom. I've even got the engine and the chain, the propeller. All I need now is something to cover the wing, some kind of cloth that's light and strong. Say, how about those swell sheets that you keep in the chest in your bedroom? You never use them. Those are my cambric sheets, dear. Those were a wedding present from your grandmother. Cambric? What's that? It's a very fine, closely woven cotton. There are 24 of them. Will that be enough? Mom, I've done it. I knew I could. I flew around Mellendorf's windmill three times. I can do anything I want to do. Of course you can. When Germany marched on Belgium the first time, he went to France and joined the Lafayette Escadrille. He never was much of a letter writer, but when he came home, he brought me some newspaper clippings. There's a picture of a gang of us getting decorated. That's a French general. That's Baby Roland. He got it over Soissons. That's Stud Reiner. Rick Tobin got him. That's one thing about flying, Mom. You gotta be good, just naturally good. Of course, I had the edge on most of those guys. They had to go to school to learn to fly. I helped invent it. He married shortly after he got back from the war. A lovely girl she was, but I knew it wouldn't work out. I remember watching her face the night he came home and told us about the barnstorming venture. There's real money in it, big money. What in the world is barnstorming? Just a bunch of fellas, got a fleet of old jennies. We're gonna go around all little hick towns, put on a show for the rubes, you know, loops and barrel rolls and immobile turns. Make a couple of parachute jumps for our ballyhoo and then we'll hop passengers for 10 bucks a throw. Of course, it's no place for a woman. I won't be out more than six or eight months. He never married again. I guess it was just as well. There wasn't much permanence in the flying business in those early days, even though he did own his own business. Robinson wants to buy us out. I think we ought to sell and go out west where we can really run an airline. How about it, Chuck? Ooh, whatever you say. Mrs. Denny was here again this afternoon. Oh, what can I do? I can't give her her husband back. She knew what to expect. He was a pilot when she married him. It was just in the cards that when he went down through that fog in Pittsburgh, that high tension line was going to be in his way. I, I think we ought to sell. We just can't meet the competition here. These big lines are putting in all sorts of gadgets, and that takes dove. Wireless telephones, the newest. Yeah. And the little panty waves won't get lost when they start out on a flight. No kidding? Sure. A little willy big shot climbs in the big, bad, dangerous airplane and takes off, and then the Flight superintendent calls him up and says, Willie, you better turn around and come back home. Looks like maybe there's going to be a little dew fall over St. Louis. Get out. Absolutely. You can't turn around without bumping into regulations. I'm going into town right now and close the deal with Robinson. I won't get what the outfit's worth, but 
I just want to get out of here, that's all. I want to move. What's the letter? Post office canceling another contract? From the Aeronautical Department of Commerce. It says here we've gone as far as we can, gentlemen, as individuals. We've got to work together, pool our knowledge and research. The radio is one answer to our problems. There's another answer that we must have, and that is the weather. <laughs> All pilots will hereafter wear rubbers and carry an umbrella. <laughs> if we ever expect to fly passengers and mail express, we must meet schedules. You know, I, I never missed a schedule yet, weather or no weather. Get a load of this. We've got to know what the weather is going to do before it happens. We must learn the reason for weather. Flying is no longer an individual effort. It's a part of our social and economic structure. And the keystone of that structure is the uh, interdependence of man. <laughs> they want an interdependence, this outfit, for 10,000 bucks to chip at the kitty. <laughs> you might send them a piece of that bunion you got that aches every time it's going to rain. Yeah, they can have their weather charts. I'll keep that bunion. They can have all those fancy blind flight instruments, artificial horizons, and all that malarkey. I'll do my blind flying in the seat of my pants. Listen, Macy, you know something? I was talking to a fellow the other day, just came down from Canada. He mentioned a little proposition. Uh, how little? Well, it's like this. The Canadian venture didn't pan out, and he decided to come back home and take a job as an airline pilot. Hey, listen, Mom, can you use a good laugh? What happened, son? Didn't you get the job? Oh, sure, I got the job, all right. All I have to do is go to school first, learn how to be a pilot. What? I'm not kidding, Mom. That's the way it is. We realize you've had a great deal of experience in flying, but after all, experience isn't the only thing. The airline pilot must have an instrument license, a radio license, and a, uh, a meteorology license. And I said, how about a dog license? After flying crates all over Europe, the United States, and Canada for over 20 years, seems I'm not a pilot. Well, then, why don't you go to this school? What? That is, if you want to be an airline pilot. Well, I'm not washed up yet. I know where I can pick up an old crate for a few hundred dollars. And I'm a, I know where I can make a living with it. How? Crop dusting. You don't have to be a pilot to do that. All you have to do is be able to fly in and out of these fields over high tension lines and hedge hop over trees and barns all day. Nice, important, romantic work. Killing boll weevils and doodle bugs, but there's dough in it. See, it's too risky for real pilots. Now, don't go getting that look in your Georgia, Alaska, Turkey, China. You might put Pathfinder after my son's name, or even Pioneer. But no, I, I think he'd be proudest of just that one word, pilot. I suppose all mothers feel the same way about their sons, that someday they'll do something that will make them proud. I always knew my boy would. From the very beginning, I knew that sometime, somewhere, he'd get his big chance. It came that night in South America, when the worst sleet storm in history struck at midnight over the Andes. Good morning, Chief. What's good about it? Get your feet off my desk. This place looks like a pig pen. What's the matter? I thought you got that answer from Washington this morning. Yeah, I got the answer. Hey, wait a minute. You mean that gang in Washington don't want a guy like you in the air corps? Where it adds up. Hand me that glass. <laughs> thousand hours a ton. Wait a minute, get a load of this. Therefore, your request for a commission has been denied. However, we feel that the older men can contribute invaluable service to the war effort by assisting with the air transportation of war commodities. Older men. How, how old's Hap Arnold? He's no chicken. How old's Jimmy Doolittle? You're not kidding me with all this beating around the bush. It's good enough for him in 1918. I invented flying. I'm not even good enough to fly for the lousy airlines. So you got an airline of your own. Yeah, They're flying mules and dynamite into the bush and taking out quinine and chocolate. You call this an airline? Well, they wouldn't let me in the army either, and I've got over 6,000 hours. No excuse hours. they give you. They couldn't call you old. Well, the guy said I was an extra void. Should have punched him in the nose. I did. Yeah, and some of those nuts tried to follow me over the Magaloni Pass in a sleet stone. Hey, where are you going with that bottle? You know what the doc said. He said that stuff's bad for your pump. Nothing's wrong with my pump. Just gets a little... Vapor locking it once in a while. Come in! This is the office of the Ace Airlines Incorporated. That's right. Close the door, brother. You're letting in the mosquitoes. I was given one of your cards at the hotel. Yes? And if what I read on your card is true, we are indeed fortunate. 
we fly anything, anywhere, anytime. That's right. Uh, how soon can you fly from here to the nearest Pan American terminal? About four hours and a half. We don't hold a license for passengers. Uh, this is an emergency. The gentleman whom I will accompany must be in Washington for a very important conference involving vital arrangements for war materials between our country and yours. I'm sure he could waive the technicalities concerning uh, your license. The only person that can waive those technicalities, brother, is the president of the republic. Uh, precisely the gentleman who I'm referring to. Hold on, you mean your president? It is of vital importance, senor. How about that, chief? We're coming up in the world, huh? Uh, it looks that way. Where'd it go? Huh? The weather report, the Pan American weather report. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Where is it? In a wastebasket, where it always I'll goes. Take it out. Okay, okay. What's the matter, boss? Isn't the bunion working? Bunion's okay. You mean the weather's okay? Don't hurt to check the bunion. That's a pretty important trip. We always got through before, didn't we? Look at that. Cold front due over Margaret It's 11.35. We always got through them cold fronts before. One time we won't make it. You mean you got a hunch? Don't you understand that we must make connections tonight with the plane for Washington? It's bad weather over the past. We have flown many times in bad weather. Sorry, it's just... just a policy of the company. Are you feeling all right, Chief? I have been given to understand that you are a pilot who is afraid of nothing. You have been given to understand correctly. And why are we waiting? For an all-clear weather report from Pan American's traffic department. Oh, this is incredible. Driving here from the hotel, the stars are shining as bright as diamonds. Is it not possible we could get there before this storm, do you expect? It's possible. Money is no object with us, senor. Money is no object with me either, senor. Might I suggest a slight addition to your slogan, senor? What do you mean? We fly anything, anywhere, anytime, weather permitting. What happened, Willie? You got me, Doc. He just sat there getting redder and redder in the face. And then he went over to the closet where he keeps his brandy bottle and it was empty. And he says for me to beat it down to the cantina and get him a bottle of brandy. Yes. Well, when I got back, there he is, dead. Slumped over his desk with his head on that weather report. Didn't anything happen to get him excited and make him real mad, did they? Did they? I'll say they did. I know he'd be pleased with the place you selected, gentlemen. I think it's perfect. High out and on a windswept hill... He always loved that poem. And as for the inscription, I'm sure that pilot is all that's necessary. He saw the vision of the world and all the wonder that would be. Saw the heavens fill with commerce, argosies of magic sails, pilots of the purple twilight dropping down with costly bales. Heard the heavens fill with shouting, and there rained a ghastly dew from the nation's airy navies, grappling in the central blue. Far along the worldwide whisper of the south wind, rushing warm, with the standards of the peoples plunging through the thunderstorm. Till a war drum throbbed no longer, and the battle flags were furled in the Parliament of Man, the Federation of the World. Good night, Americans. This program has come to you from the Lockheed and Vega Aircraft Corporations of Burbank, California. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.